In this design of experiment video series, I'm going to show you uh, the four steps uh, hypothesis testing method. Uh, in this four step hypothesis testing method uh, is uh, basically I use this uh, system to test uh, the hypothesis. Um, in any kind of um, research experiment, typically you have a research question that you would like to solve and then you use a method uh, to uh, collect the data and you apply a suitable statistical method to analyze the data. And then you find the results and then also the conclusion you try to find out whether uh, your research hypothesis or questions is supported by the uh, by your um, data um, and that's what you uh, wrote right in the conclusion section so there are four steps introduction um, write down the hypothesis method write down the suitable statistical uh, analysis method and resolve uh, is based on the analysis using that method and contextual conclusion finally you say whether the hypothesis is supported or not so to do that i'm going to start with a uh, simple uh, uh, experiment uh, let's say that we want to test the height of u.s uh, male uh, population and uh, we we collected this data from uh, let's see how many start from 2 and then 42 so we collected uh, let's make it 40 let's make it a little bit easier so we collected data from this 40 um, male person uh, born in the United States and see um, try to measure their height so we found that 72 inches 69 inches so this is the height measured from the uh, US male now so the research question or hypothesis the step number one uh, in in the four step uh, method of hypothesis testing step number one is the introduction uh, so write down the uh, hypothesis or the research question uh, writing the hypothesis or I would say your research question whatever way you would like to call now hypothesis has two parts one is the null hypothesis um, which is expressed using a subscript zero uh, null means nothing so in null hypothesis um, you write um, is, is zero is nothing um, or equal no difference things like that so you always write the mean value mean height of uh, US male is equal to say we have to have some guess to test let's say we want to test the mean height of US male is 70 inches uh, is that hypothesis supported by the data we collected so that would be our null hypothesis alternative would be alternative hypothesis would be anything other than the uh, what is mentioned in the null hypothesis so in this case we can write the height of US male is not equal to 70 inches typically it is written in notation like not equal sign but it's a little bit difficult to do it in Excel so I'm going to just write it um, so this is the step number thing oh leave it here so step number one introduction and then step number two is the now a couple of things I would like to uh, write down as a note for the hypothesis the hypothesis is always for the population uh, not for the sample that's number one number two is hypothesis null hypothesis always follow a an equal sign 
a lot of time I have seen that when the uh, research question is something like the height of US male is more than 70 inches if you uh, try to prove that a lot of time I have seen that people write um, the more than sign in the uh, null hypothesis and in the alternative they flip it to equal signs so you should never flip that remember the null hypothesis null means nothing equal no difference things like that let's say you are testing uh, two medicine uh, two headache medicine uh, for example tylenol and a placebo you want to see the effect of that as we know that uh, tylenol is a it works uh, in headaches so it will significantly statistically reduce the headache time if you take it if you take placebo or no medicine it will take more time to get rid of headache so in that case people have a tendency to say tylenol reduces the headache and they put that statement in the null hypothesis that's wrong null hypothesis means no effect so tylenol equals placebo we'll go a little bit more on that later however remember null means zero nothing uh, equal no difference things like that and your alternative hypothesis is this is actually uh, you want to put what you want to prove uh, but we'll talk about that more in in other videos um, I'm trying to show only the four-step method of hypothesis testing in this video so let's continue that so that's about the null hypothesis uh, and then the alternative and how to write that and then the method part uh, step number two uh, now this part is is a little bit uh, difficult to understand for uh, just by taking one statistics course or uh, it takes a while to understand which method is appropriate in this case i know that is a, a single sample so the method here in this case it is we can do a single sample t test uh, it 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 is not that easy to determine uh, what is the most suitable method um, i would suggest like choosing any method you should contact consult any uh, statistician for that uh, for your uh, data in fact before you collect any data you should talk about the method first because sometimes the data is already messed up we cannot analyze it because it was not collected properly it's too less to fix um, in this case the if you have a single population and you want to test a number you could actually use two tests one is t test one is z test uh, however uh, a t test and z test they almost kind of same and um, you could use in any situation t test uh, theoretically maybe there will be argument but in practically there will be no difference between z test and t test so let's use this uh, t test and find out uh, the probability value uh, so for the t test i'm going to copy the formula for t test here this is the formula for single sample t test so what we need i should in fact write this way let me fix the formula for t test should be actually df let's copy the more appropriate formula so it says instead of just t i would like to write t d f excuse me got a little bit cold this morning sorry about that now to get the value from t test we need x bar we can calculate that from the data we can type average let me do it in caps lock average and then you can simply select that column it will calculate the average for you and then we need a standard deviation yes uh, small s that is equal sd stdev dot s that will give you the average from the sample select that entire column hit ok and then the 
sample size and that would be equal count you can use the count function to do that simply click on a that will count only the uh, cells where you have numeric values so it will ignore this uh, this and also all the empty cells after that uh, so you got that now degrees of freedom is basically df is equal to n minus 1 in this case so that's equal to basically this minus 1 what happened oh. 39 so what else do I need mu that will come from your null hypothesis which we said that it is 70 inches so we're testing 70 inches height so let's calculate the td value t value or t statistics tdf equals so just write down that formula so x minus uh, x minus oops that would be equal to parenthesis x minus mu close the parenthesis divide by sqrt s square s square divide by n sample size close the parenthesis uh, should be it. So now p value, probability value, um, or p value in short, is uh, equal to t dist. So t dist will calculate the uh, probability values from a t distribution. It will ask for t value. This is my t value, comma degrees of freedom. This is the t degrees of freedom now tails comes from your alternative hypothesis so if you write not equal that means it could be less than or it could be higher than so it is a two-sided hypothesis it will be more clear when you will do one of the one-sided hypothesis in the next video so that is the p-value so we got the probability now this probability um, you could watch the video of my p-value explanation this probability is basically the probability of the null hypothesis to happen now result uh, step number three is the we say we we accept the null hypothesis because the p value point seven one one is larger than the level of significance which is 0 0.05 um what's the video on the p value and level of significance explanation now um some of the theoretical statistician will say we shouldn't use the word except but for us engineer all we need to know whether this height is 70 or not so it's okay and uh, was that video where i explain whether you should use accept reject things like that what language should you use but in this case just use whatever is easy for us and then step number four is the contextual conclusion this part you should write this in a way so an eighth grader understand what's going on so basically rewrite the uh, accepted hypothesis so you can say yes statistically the height 
of US mail is 70 inches because we accepted the null hypothesis so that is the four steps hypothesis testing uh, we'll do some more of these in next videos